in this video, I'm going to take a look at an introduction to integration. Now, before we introduce integration here, let's just recap differentiation because these go hand in hand. So if I've got y equals, say, x squared, let's just pick a really basic example here. So y equals x squared. If we differentiate this here to get dy by dx, then we'd be differentiating with respect to x, and that would be 2x because we times the coefficient here by the power and then reduce the power by 1. So that would be 2x to the power of 1, which is just 2x. Okay. Now, what happens if we begin with dy by dx? So dy by dx. Again, let's just use the same example here. So dy by dx is equal to 2x. How do we work backwards now? So how do I go backwards to get y? Well, the way we do that is through using integration. Now, we have a general result for integration. So let me just give the general result first. So this is the notation we use. We use this kind of like this squiggle here, and we call this an integral. So if I want to integrate x to the power of n, with respect to x, we use dx here to represent this. Then what I do is I'd add 1 to the power, so I'm going to get x to the power of n plus 1, okay? And then we divide by n plus 1. We divide by this new power here, okay? So if that was x squared, then I'd add 1 to the power, so that'd give me x cubed, and I'd divide by that new power of 3, okay? And with this result here, we have something called the constant of integration, so that the letter we use, the variable that we normally use here, is plus c. But it doesn't actually matter. You can use any letter, but c is what you will typically see in textbooks, exam papers, and so on. Now, it's just important to note here that you can integrate something like this when n is equal to minus 1. So this doesn't work when n is equal to minus 1. You will see in the second year material, we do have a way to integrate something of that form. But for first year material, we, um, we just admit that we won't cover how to integrate something of that type. Okay, so that's my general result. So if I'm now integrating 2x here, I'm integrating x, oh sorry, um, dy by dx here with respect to x. So we're integrating 2x with respect to x. So in that case, we add 1 to the power. I'm going to get 2x to the power of 2. And then we divide by that new power. We're just using this result here. So we divide by the new power. And don't forget the constant of integration, so plus c. Now we can simplify this here. So y is equal, so 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I get x squared to the, um, plus c as well. So I get x squared plus c, and that's our result there. So the reason we have this plus c here as well, just in case you're wondering, is because once I integrate this, there's an, there's an infinite number of results that we could have here. I could have x squared plus 3. I could have x squared minus 5. I could have x squared plus 100. We don't know um, what that constant would be. Okay, so in that case, we we use plus c here to cover that kind of idea. Um, we'll see later on in a few videos how we actually find functions using a given point. Okay, so we'll kind of see how to deal with that plus c there. So that's a very basic introduction to integration. So this is integrating um, something of the form x to the n. So let's take a look now at a few examples. Taking a look at a few examples now, so what I've got here to start with is y equals 1 over x cubed. And I want to integrate that with respect to x. So we're integrating 1 over x cubed with respect to x. Now rather than trying to integrate it like this, we want to write this in index notation. So 1 over x cubed, that's the same as x to the minus 3. So we're integrating x to the minus 3 with respect to x. Okay. And we just use our general result here, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So that's the same as x. Or what we're going to get here is x to the minus 2 over this new power, so minus 2. And then don't forget our constant of integration, so plus c. So there's nothing wrong with leaving the solution like this, but if we want to make this a bit neater, we can bring the minus in front. So we get minus x to the minus 2 all over 2, as well as the constant of integration there, plus c. OK, and that's our solution to that first question. For the next one here, we're given f prime of x. We want to, or that's equal to 3 root x, and we want to find f of x. So we're working backwards now. This is the same as dy by dx. We want y here. So we're going to integrate this here with respect to x. So we're integrating 3 root x with respect to x. And again, same idea here. Rather than trying to integrate like this, use index notation. 
So this is the same as integrating 3x to the power of a half because root x is x to the power of a half. So we're integrating here with respect to x. So what we do here is we add 1 to the power. So if I've got a half and I add 1, then that's the same as a half plus 2 over 2, giving me 3 over 2. Okay, so what I get here then is 3x to the power of 3 over 2. And we divide by this power here. So we divide by 3 over 2. Okay, so dividing by 3 over 2 is the same as times it by 2 thirds. So times this by 2 thirds here. So what I'm going to get then is 6x to the power of 3 over 2 all over 3. And in that case, we can simplify here. So 6 over 3 is 2. So we get 2x to the power of 3 over 2 there. Okay, and then don't forget our concept of integration, our plus c. Okay, really important that we don't forget that. We do lose a mark if we forget the constant of integration. Okay, so that's f of x. And that's our solution to that question there. Moving on to the next page then. A couple more questions here. So we've got y is equal to 4x cubed plus 1. We want to find the integral of y with respect to x. So what we're doing here is integrating 4x cubed plus 1 with respect to x. Now in this case here we have more than one term but it doesn't matter. All I do is I integrate term by term. So begin with the 4x cubed here. If I integrate this I add 1 to the power divided by the new power. We're just using our general result here. So in that case we're going to get 4x to the power of 4 over 4. So 4x to the power of 4 all over 4. And if we have a constant like this it's important to know. So if we've got a constant and we integrate with respect to a variable say x then we're just going to get that constant times our variable. So I'm going to get 1 times x, giving me x there. Okay, so we get plus x, and we have no limits on our integral, so don't forget the constant of integration. I'm going to simplify this just to finish with here. So 4x to the power of 4 over 4, that would just give me x to the power of 4 there. So x to the power of 4 plus x plus c there. Okay, and that's our solution to that question. Now for this one here, I've got f prime of x. And we want f of x. So we're working backwards again, so we're going to integrate all of this here. Now, looking at this here, we need to do a bit of work because to try and integrate this like this, not straightforward. But we can simplify as we go here. So I've got 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus x all over x. So I can write this over, or I can write this as three fractions here. So what I've actually got then is f prime of x, which is equal. So 3x cubed over x minus 2x squared over x plus x over x. Okay, that's what I've actually got here. So if we simplify this here, 3x cubed over x, that would give me 3x squared. Minus 2x squared over x, that would give me minus 2x. And then finally, x over x would give me plus 1. Okay, and now this becomes far more straightforward to integrate. So I'm integrating this now um, with respect to x. So we're integrating this now. So let's just do that down here. We'll integrate 3x squared minus 2x plus 1 with respect to x. Okay. And again, we just go term by term here. So add 1 to the power. So I'm going to get 3x cubed. So 3x cubed over 3 minus 2x squared. So we add 1 to the power. So minus 2x squared all over 2. And again, we just got this constant here, so we times that by the variable. So 1x, or just x there. Okay, and don't forget our constant of integration. Now let's simplify here. So this is the same as x cubed. 3 over 3 is 1, so we get x cubed. 2 over 2, so that'll just be 1 again, so I get minus x squared. And then we've got plus x and plus c there. Okay, quite a nice solution actually. And there we have it. So that's our solution to that question there. And moving on to the very last question here. We've been given dy by dx. And we want to find y. Again, there's multiple terms here. So we're just going to go term by term as we integrate here. It's already an in index notation. So we can just go straight into integrating this. So we're going to integrate 4x to the power of minus 5 plus 2x cubed minus 7 all with respect to x. Okay, so go term by term here. So 4x, so that means to the power of minus 4 when I add 1, minus 4, and divide by this new power. So minus 4. 
I then got 2x to the power of 3, so add 1 to that power, so I get 2x to the power of 4. Divide by that power. And finally, we've got a constant here, minus 7. So we times that by the variable that we're integrating with respect to, and I get minus 7x. Okay, we have no limits on the integral, so we can't forget our constant of integration plus c. Simplify as we go here, so 4 over minus 4, well, that would be minus 1. So we get minus x to the minus 4. I've then got 2 over 4, so that's the same as a half. So I've got 1x to the 4, or just x to the 4 over 2. Like so. I've then got minus 7x, we can't do anything with that. And finally, we've got plus c there. Okay. And there we have it, that's our solution. We can't do anything further with it. If you want to make it a little bit neater, we could write the positive term first. So it'd be x to the 4 over 2, minus x to the minus 4, minus 7x plus c. It doesn't really matter. Um, just makes it a little bit neater. But there we have it, that's our solution either way. And that brings us to the end of this video on an introduction to integration. In the next video, we're going to take a look at definite integrals.